Welcome, welcome, all of my friends. Hi, I'm Renee McLaughlin, and I'd like to just welcome you from Facebook and my YouTube to today's live cast. So good, good, good. I hope a lot of you come on and say hi to me when you come on. I'd love to see who's on. And let me just introduce myself real quickly for those of you who might be new either to myself or to TTAP. So I am a master TTAP trainer and a somatic movement educator, and I've been teaching TTAP for over 22 years. It has been quite the journey. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about TTAP, my journey, Teresa's journey, why I wanted to come on today and explain about it, because over those years, here is one thing I can absolutely tell you. TTAP works. It is an amazing method of movement. And it was created by a woman whose name is Teresa Tapp. Unfortunately, Teresa has passed. She's not with us a few years ago, which was just so incredibly sad. But luckily, we at least had her for at least I did for a good 20 years to learn from and learn from her I did because Teresa was if nothing else an educator she loved to teach and her biggest message was move movement is medicine that's really what we need to look and feel our best in our bodies now I want to take you fast forward okay Teresa had been talking about fascia Basha and the lymphatic system. Those were two of her really big topics that she would teach us. And these are two subjects, especially the fascial system, that, gosh, 22, 23 years ago, nobody was talking about fascia. Like, what even is fascia? Nobody knew. Even the doctors and, and people who do dissection on cadavers, it was like they would just pull the fascia off because they wanted to get to the good stuff, right? To the organs and the big stuff, the stuff that you could see and touch and feel. You can't really see. I mean, you could kind of peel it off, but they didn't really get what this stuff was. It was just throwaway stuff. OMG. And now what science has finally figured out, and the research is incredible now, that fascia is its own huge system of the body. It's essentially probably like the biggest organ in the body. It's absolutely amazing. And what I've been learning, because I've been doing a bit of a deep dive into the science and what all it's showing is just... I'm so excited, you guys. It's just absolutely blowing me away. And it's blowing me away because I'm learning so much about the fascia and saying, oh my gosh, it like confirms everything that Teresa was doing and saying. Not even saying because she just sort of, who knows why, she was so gifted. She intuitively knew about the fascia. She intuitively knew how to incorporate it in her workout. And she would have words that she would use. And only now I'm going, oh, that was what she meant. <laughs> I don't even know that she really knew all of it. And she made up words and examples to explain what she knew, but she didn't really have that science behind it yet. So isn't that cool that we knew about it and only now science, the big guys and girls are now sharing with us. So I wanted to just share a little bit about that and why that's so important and just give more blessings to this incredible visionary. I don't know how she knew, but she really did know. And this is what I can say over the years, 20 some years of working with hundreds and hundreds of women. TTAP does work. Now, when I say it works, what does works mean exactly? Well, what it means is it will help you get out of pain. It will help you reshape your body. It will help you detox. It will help you move your body in such a way that you can actually gain energy, be able to sleep, get muscle definition, yes, um, 
and do all this without exhausting your adrenal glands. You can do it in, she would say 15, 18 minutes. I personally like to do it for about 30, but if all you can do is five or 10 minutes, you're still going to feel a difference because here's what we now know via the fascia lens. Ladies, we must move. We've got to move this body and we've got to move this body in all different ways, ways that she taught us. We need to move our fingers. We need to work our feet. We need to do our arm pumps every day if we want to be healthy. If you want to have a strong immune system, if you want to lower that inflammation, if you want to age gracefully, if you want to go through perimenopause and menopause and postmenopause and all those different hormonal platforms and ways, we need to move. It is essential. That's how you keep healthy fascia and the healthy fascia is going to help us stay healthy all the way through. That's the bottom line. And it is just breathtaking. So let me do this. I'm going to go all the way back just a little bit. I want to give you, for those of you who are new to TTAP, some of you already know this story. You've heard it a thousand times. So pardon me for repetition, but there are new people on that are just like, what is this TTAP thing? My friend told me it worked, but I don't, I don't, is it tap dancing? <laughs> No, and we're not tapping on her forehead. It's about Teresa Tap. That was her name. But Teresa, way, way back when she was a teenager, she was a gymnast and she was doing some work on a balance beam. She fell off. She hurt her back. But back then there was no, oh, let's rush you to the hospital and see what's happening. It was get back up on that balance beam and keep working. And that was what she did. And she ended up with a very bad um, back issue. She hurt her back terribly and it would lock up. And all of the doctors and physicians would say, don't move, keep it immobile. And she just knew, she knew this was her intu intuition telling her, no, not moving is not my answer. And so she would get on the floor and she would just do as what, what I would call now, because we do this in somatics, right? The arch, she would arch the back and curl it on the floor and she would get movement. And what she found is the more she moved that spine the more she healed until finally she was able to get up and really heal that back. So you guys who have been following me, what do I say? If there are only, you only have five minutes in the day and you need to move, every day we've got to move our spine and we have to move it in all of its ranges of motion. What does that mean? We've got to curl the tail, right? In T-Tap, what do we do? We tuck curl. You've got to arch, create that spine in the back, stretching the fascia in the front and in the back. We need to do lateral sides. The spine has to be able to stretch this way and go this way. Guess what? There are lateral fascial lines that we need to move along with it. She just knew that. What else do we need to do? We need to rotate we need to rotate that spine. We need to get rotation and hydrate the fascia in between all of those spinal discs. She just knew that. She knew how to do it. What else did she learn? Somewhere, I don't know where, she never really explained it, <laughs> but she knew the importance of working our feet and working our hands. She even put out a DVD this is probably around 2013. I don't even know anymore, right? The years just kind of fly by when you've been doing it as long as I have. But it was an amazing DVD. And she showed us we did all kinds of things working the feet. She had things for hands, which would really help with carpal tunnel. She's done that consistently. And it was like, 
I was always so blown away, especially we'd go to a retreat and she'd have a, a section. It was usually right before lunch. And we would do all this footwork and this handwork. And I just, I always had these memories of after that, getting out and we would walk down the street to have lunch. And it was like, I just felt like I was walking on these little pillows. I felt it all the way up my legs, all the way up the body. I just thought that was so amazing. And I would tell my clients, you've got to get this. But it was like, yeah, fingers and feet. Tell me about how to get rid of my belly. I don't have fingers and feet. I'm like, yeah, fingers and feet. And she would say, if you want to increase your metabolism, you got to work those feet. Fascial science is now proving and confirming. Yeah. Where do the fascial lines start? In the feet and go all the way up. How about with the arms? All those hand positions, working the hands. Yes. It starts here. If you're all bound up in here, you can't get you can't get beautiful arms until you really move and work that fascia. Teresa knew that from all the way in the beginning. And that's why all the workouts always have things about feet and hands. How amazing is that? So there's just she just came up with so many things over the years. She progressed the workout. Um, because she got older, of course, and I got older right along with her, and we all got older right along with her. And so she continued to get more and more ways of moving and hydrating the fascia. That is a huge reason, ladies, if you're looking at starting TTAP, I just want you to understand that there is so now so much science behind the philosophy and the movements that are in your TTAP workout. It is the most intelligently designed workout, I believe, right now that you can do. So if you're like, I don't know, should I, should I invest? People are like, well, I don't even want to start until I know. Did anybody, did anybody really cinch in their belly there? I'm not going to do it unless I know that there is at least three ladies here that have gotten those kind of results. And if that's there, yes. <laughs> Yes, which is why in my TTAP group, I posted a picture of Deborah Schaefer, who lost all those inches. I don't remember now how many, 12 or something in two weeks. And then, of course, it's like, well, what did she do? What moves? I just wanted to do those three moves that got her belly going. Well, you know what? Fascia is all the way through your body, right? It's not about doing that two, those two little belly moves, because we've got to work the entire system in order to get those um, specific spot training things. So what did Deborah do? Deborah did the 15 minute basic workout plus and did she do it right? Probably not because there is no real right. All right. You just start and you just start to do it. And the more you do it, the more you feel it, the better you get, the more ability you have. And it just keeps going and growing from there. And that's really it's been my experience for 20 some years and I'm sticking to it. So I just want to go over a couple of things about fascia to start to just give you a little taste of its magnificence and kind of maybe pull a little bit more of this together from what I'm saying. What is fascia? What is it? It is actually connective tissue. So did you realize that fascia is your tendons, your ligaments, and that stuff that you get right underneath that chicken skin that's called fascia? It is a collagenous, fibrous material that's gel-like. It's hydrating, it's water, but it's structured water in this jelly. And guess what it does? It does two things. It connects every single cell in our body every cell and it separates everything from each other that's so huge when you think about it so i want to ask you a question because this kind of blows me away just thinking about it and hi ladies thank you from idaho and margie hi and renee hi thank you for coming by and saying hi to me um you know, when you look at a skeleton, like typically you can see that skeleton hanging, right? The skeleton bones hang there. Have you ever thought to yourself, like, how does it just stand up and stay straight like that? Well, a skeleton like that will stay straight because it's got a rod up it and it's holding up by the rod. 
But did you realize that none of the bones are touching each other? The bones are holding the bones up. And then, of course, we have those muscles and we look at the muscles and we see those muscles and we're like, okay, do the muscles connect everything? Do you know that there's fascia and connective tissue through every single muscle fiber? So it's the connective tissue, it's the mus it's the tendons and the ligaments and the fascia that connect and keep the bones all together. There's softer fascia that is there just cushioning every one of your organs. There's connective tissue in the brain that really helps. Connective tissue is through everything. How about all of our nerves? All of our nerves are embedded in the fascia and in the fascia system. Now, I want you to think about this too. I always think this is so fascinating. Like the body does a gazillion things all day long and we're not even thinking about it, right? What, like what? Like it holds our pH balance at a very tiny, tiny um, window all day. It keeps that acid alkaline balance balanced. How does it do that? Did you know that if you have pain, of course, something's not right. So there is some signal that's going to go from where that pain is up to your brain. How's it do that? Through the fascia. Everything happens through the fascia. All the information and energy that we have going through our body, even energy, just the energy. I mean, how do we have energy? Where does that come from? How do we store it? Where do we get it? And when we don't have it, how come we don't have it? Where's the blockage? It's all in your fascia. Energy and information. It is the information highway through the brain, all the way through every single muscle, every single fiber, every part of your bone. Its bone is living. Everything. I mean, you can tell, you guys, that I am now like this fascia nut because I just find it so fascinating. Now, here's another little thing about fascia. Fascia is in all these different really tiny layers. So even if you think about it being through the, the layers of your skin, the layers of your muscle, it's all layered. And it's layered in these, so in layers. And the layers of fascia must slide and glide. One of the, the big reasons that we also have fascia besides, every, besides everything else that I've told you is it's there to help distribute load throughout the body. So if you stand on one leg, it has to be able to stabilize you there. So you have mobility here. So there's stabilizers, there's mobilizers, they're shifting the force so that you can stand up. OK, you move the arm, something else has to move. The fascia is always listening to what we're doing and transferring load to keep us standing up and moving and going forward. That's how freaking powerful the fascia is. OK, so think about this for a moment then. As long as the fascia is sliding and gliding, we're sliding and gliding. Everything's good. But what happens when the fascia binds up and gets sticky and like gluey? Then we can't move as well, can we? We have restrictions. Oh, my neck and shoulders hurt. My hip hurts. How come? Because that fascia has gotten stuck and glued and bound together. And what can create that? Lack of movement, acidity, think sugar, white flour, trans fats. We think, oh, I'll just have a little treat today. I'll just reward myself with this little treat of sugar. And yeah, it feels good for a few minutes, doesn't it? But we don't even stop to think about the longer term effects because that just out, it makes our system acidic. Those cells get acidic the fascia gets acidic and it binds up and creates inflammation 
And that's one of the reasons that we get inflamed when we eat too much sugar and things that don't agree with our bodies. All right, let me tell you one more because I think this is just so much fun. So what do we do all day? So many of us, right? Especially if you have a job that you're sitting and let's face it, over time, when we're not thinking about it, those shoulders roll forward, the head juts forward. Now I want you to think about something. This cranium weighs 10, 12 pounds, depending on how big we are. Now, if you had to rely on your muscles to hold that weight for 12 hours a day while you're doing this, oh my God, you would not be able, you would not be able to hold your head up. I'm just saying, you know what happens? The fascia is there taking on that load. And over time, if you don't keep moving and stretching it out, and getting that fascia and everything moving in all those different directions and opening it up, it binds, it dehydrates and creates a glue and it binds up. And then there we are about 60 years old and we're walking like this and going to the doctor and saying, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm all bound up like this. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's time to open up. You've got to get in there and move. Movement will unbind and hydrate the fascia. Ta-da! There we are again. So let me take this all the way back to our T-Tap workout. Because primary back stretch, what are we doing? We're pulling those elbows back. We're engaging the muscles in the back. We're opening up in the pecs and we're strengthening back here aren't we? And you'll hear me teaching, keep those elbows back, but it's hard, isn't it? Because now you got to really work through the fascia into that muscle to do that, to get an engaged muscle. Teresa was always talking about muscle activation. we got to activate that muscle through the fascia, get the fascia moving. It's all there. One of my love-hate moves that I do every day to keep my fascia moving are our arm pumps, pulling those arms back, rotating back, giving yourself those arm pumps. That's intense, isn't it? Especially if you haven't moved all day. And at first, when we first start, we're kind of like this. And then we start to lift. And then over time, over time, as we release that bound fascia, get it hydrated, start getting rid of some of the junk that's in there, you start to open up like this. And then what would she do? She'd do all those neck stretches. Did you know that the fascia is all in here? We just talked about getting it bound all up in here, up in the neck and shoulders, all in here. Let's talk about the lymph system. So the lymph system is a fluid. Of course, it's all through the fascia. And what happens with that lymph system? The lymph system requires deep abdominal breathing, and movement. And what is does it do? It's our body's detox system. So it you move it, right? It's one of the reasons we love the walking workouts. We love hoedowns. Every time you do this, we're pumping that lymphatic up from the bottom, all the way up through, all through the groin, all the way up through here to do that. Along with these, we're pumping that lymph. We're taking the lymph goes in and collects all of that, the toxins, the pesticides, the herbicides, the excess hormones, the whatever else you, you know, we've got going on in there. And it takes it to all these little lymph nodes. And those lymph nodes go in and neutralize the junk in there. And then through more movement, it takes it to our organs of elimination. What are those? It's our skin, our kidneys, our, um, intestines, etc., so that we can release it through the body. But guess what, girls? When we don't move, we don't get lymph movement. And then we get swollen glands up in here, up in here. We get toxic, and we're just a big toxic soup. Not moving is the biggest way to feel crappy. <laughs> so let's go the other way. You know I'm all about the positive. It's time to move. Get up and move. <laughs> That's the whole key. Of course, I love doing it through my tea tap, but I just want to tell you movement is the best 
sweetest medicine that you can give yourself in all the fascia work that science is coming through is just absolutely confirming it confirming it so we've got to move and if you're new to movement not sure what to do you've been sitting a long time just get started with your t-tap workout so i know i get asked well renee where do i start i've never done it you know how do i go so number one if you're on youtube welcome youtube friends <laughs> Just go, you'll obviously you're probably on my channel or go to my channel and just you'll see the most recent. I've got a lot of new, I've been really posting a lot more of the TTAP workouts. Just get in and just start doing it. Don't worry about doing it all right. Don't worry about finding the very best one. Just do it. Just do it. Get up and move. One of the things over the years that um, I think it's a big, that, uh, to me, it's a myth, and it's a myth that won't die, and that is if you don't do TTAP right, you won't get any results. Just moving, you're going to get results. You know, you go to do arm pumps. If you're all tight and you're, and you're like here, and you're just trying to, or you're doing this, you're still going to get a result more than if you don't do anything you're going to get a result. Over time, you're going to go, oh, wait a second. You know what? Now my brain can hear, oh, don't lift from the lower arm. Did she just say like lift from the, oh, that's a whole new thing. To me, it is really like saying to your little baby, you know what? Just get up and walk. Get up and walk and I want you to walk perfectly. And if you don't walk perfectly, you just stay down there on the floor. Of course, we wouldn't do that. But I do that extreme example to say, you can't do T-tap all right until you even know what it is. You've got to experience it. And there's only one way. And it's not asking five people how it worked for them. Is that you just saying, just get and try it for yourself. You'll never know. You've got to experience it. Experience the joy of feeling that body opening up. Now, in the beginning, especially if you've been sitting a while, you might not love it. It might not feel like candy to you at that moment. But when you're done, oh, my goodness, you'll just be like, wow, like, man, I feel good. I'm sleep. I slept like a baby. I always, I get that one a lot. Oh, I slept like a baby. Yeah, you're just, all your energy is just so bound up in that fascia. When you start moving and you start moving the toxicity and getting the inflammation down, imagine it. You can sleep and you have more energy and the brain turns on. There's just so many benefits to this. So, just do one of those. If you're somebody though who maybe has been doing it, maybe doing some of those videos and like, you know, I just would really love to kind of dig in and get all the little details. Beautiful. Then you might want to go and get one of my packages I have called TTAP Method 101. And in that package of recorded classes, I just take all the different moves and the stance and break them up and go slowly and really cue. So you can then start to really get engaged and start feeling and breaking down all the moves. But you know, not all of us need to be all that de detailed. Just do it. Do it and be your own, your own best experience. So, oh, I know, there was one more thing that I really want to talk about tonight for you. And there's a few more people on. Hey, Karen and, and Nan, good to see you. And my dear, dear friend, Cheryl. Hey, sweetie, if you're still on, so good. I'm so glad you joined. And here's what I do want to talk about because I get asked this a lot. What's that thing about the organs? Like, I don't get it. I'm not putting my, was my organs out of place? How come I got to put my organs up? <laughs> so for years, I mean, Teresa would talk about how to put your organs in place. And it looks kind of like this. I'm not going to detail it all out, but you're kind of pulling your guts up and you're pressing in and lifting and then doing a little side stretch. We do it standing frequently. Then we'll do it on the ground and you just pull everything like down and up. And then we wiggle and like, and so she would say, you know, you're just pulling up what gravity is pressing down, you're pulling it up, and then we're creating a spinal, a girdle of muscle, like a Spanx, to hold it all in. And yeah, you know what? 
that makes perfect sense to me. I get that. And that worked. And that explanation is a beautiful explanation. And I'm sure it does do all that. But you know what I now realize? Girls, we're unbinding the fascia down there in those lower girl parts, in the belly parts, in the female parts, in the digestive parts. And how many of us have had any kind of trauma, which, you know, by the way, all emotion gets stored in, we say it's stored in the muscle. It's really stored in the fascia. And when you start moving, you can start releasing some of that trauma, right? So where do we get bound up? We get bound up down here in this place, okay? I know that I do. And we get adhesions. Have any of you had C-sections? Well, if you've had a C-section, you get scar tissue. And what is scar tissue? Ta-da! Bound fascia. And you know that there's restriction there, right? You can feel it in there. It, it's Yes, it cuts the nerve transmission. Blah. Why? Because you cut through the fascia <laughs> to get in there, right? Had to, absolutely. But this is what's happening. So the more that you can start to unbind this, now you can actually start to get in and work muscle. You can't work in that muscle when it's all bound up with the fascia. So I was like, oh, MJ, yeah, we're unbinding and wiggling and hydrating ah, the fascia every time we do organs in place. So now when we go to do organs in place and you're like, I don't want to do this silly thing again, you'll know, oh, yes, I do. I'm going to unbind and hydrate, get the fascia sliding and gliding. <laughs> and that way we can start to really work down in this area. That's how we're going to get a thin belly. How are you going to do it? We're going to curl it. We're going to arch it. We're going to stretch it in the sides. We're going to do rotations. We're going to unbind all that fascia so that we can then get in and approach that load and really start to work everything. We're going to work up in the upper body. We're going to release that neck and shoulder tension. We're going to work those lats. Do you know what? Those lats are all part of the fascial lines. We're going to work the feet. We're going to work the hands. We're going to feel so much better. So thanks, you guys. I just had to come on and share that because I'm. you can tell I just have so much I just want to share, which is why I decided I just really wanted to do a Get Fascia Fit with TTAP Workshop. And so I'm offering that this Saturday from one to three. Yes, it's recorded. So if you can't make it live, sad face, but at least you'll also get all the information, the recordings. So it's going to be part lecture where I'm really going to start detailing down even more about this fascia, show you the fascia lines, and then we're going to do some TTAP and we're going to do it with even more fascia focus. And we're going to add some things to it that will make your TTAP workout even even more effective. Um, so I think you'll just really get so much out of it. I'm really excited about it. Um, and if you have any questions about it, because I do have that, you know, about the workshop posted, just list that. So I'll make sure. I know I also already need to know what can I do about my fascia plantitis. I know I said that wrong, fasciitis. And we're going to talk about that because that is an inflammation of the plantar fascia downs in the feet. Yes. And we're going to talk about that. I also got some questions about, gee, Renee, you know, when I sit a lot and I get up, I'm stiff. Even though I get up every hour or whatever to stretch, I'm stiff. Yeah. You know, the body wasn't meant to sit like that, <laughs> but that's up the front lines of the body. So we're going to talk about what moves can you do to keep that as healthy as possible as well. So um, hope you can join me on that. If so, sign up. I'll put the link on again. Um, but if not, we'll just keep, we'll keep working through it. We'll keep working through it. And hey, Harmony, she was on the live and she's going to be joining. I always love it. Harmony just, she just gets it. You know, she feels it in her body. And, um, and thank you for that. Class packages and membership are really great. I so appreciate that. Um, Good stuff. And there's Margie on again. Good. And Mary's on. Hey, girls. Thanks for joining. All right, you guys. So um, hopefully, I think if nothing else, I really just want to say, 
I'm just so in awe and I just, I get, I get um, emotional about it because I just feel so blessed in my life to have had Teresa Tapp as a mentor. Um, all the things she taught me and you know, you guys, and those of you who are also blessed enough to know her and maybe to have gone to some retreats, etc. you know, <laughs> Teresa sometimes would kind of make stuff up. <laughs> And I think, you know, what she did was, I'm kind of like getting a new understanding a little bit of some of this, where she would sort of make stuff up and I would then repeat it and then find out later, like, there's, that wasn't true. <laughs> but I think it was because intuitively she knew what she knew. And even though I might not have been given the right, she never really maybe gave the right information sometimes about why that was. She just knew it was. And so she created, for example, I'll just give a quick, <laughs> a quick one. She would say, we have this neurokinetic flow, this flow of information neurologically from the brain, kinetic through the muscle. And so I would always use that term. It makes perfect sense to me. And I think we're just going to create a term and give it to Wiki. Okay neurokinetic flow. And I found out much later from this PhD scientist, you know what? That's not a word. <laughs> but you know what? It worked for me. I get it. It's neurokinetic flow. And where do we get it from? You have the answer now through the fascia. There you have it. So thanks, you guys. I can't wait. Oh, good, man. You're looking forward to the replay. Beautiful. Yes, we'll have it right there for you. And I think you'll find it great. And um, Ta-da! And thanks, you guys. So have a great one. If you have any other questions, you know to always post even after, and I'll see if I can answer it for you. So go have a Fasha fabulous day and keep moving. Just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Such sweet medicine. Don't stop the moving. <laughs> thanks, you guys. Have a beautiful evening.